today on Be Something Wonderful. How you're desiring and wanting means it's already yours. I am your host, Tom Karen, and this is the Be Something Wonderful studio of higher consciousness, where we help you level up and become the best version of yourself. Creators, good morning. Welcome back to the studios at Be Something Wonderful in Las Vegas. Big, big video today. I want to talk about a session yesterday. This client had questions on yesterday's video where we talked about affirmations and this idea of trying to believe it. Right? She wanted to know, Tom, how can I believe it? If I'm still desiring and wanting it, then I don't believe it. I don't believe it's mine. This whole question came up on wanting, desiring, believing, affirming. But we're going to unpack all of these ideas today and more. Remember this, and we've talked about this, and we're going to lead in with this, but we're going to unpack these ideas more than we ever have before. Your desire, remember, desires are natural, as we've talked about. Desires is that natural urge as source energy to experience yourself, physic to have that physical experience of what you already know to be true of who you are. It's the natural urge for life and more life as a creator, right? That divine urge. So your desire is evidence of your wish already fulfilled. Hear this. Remember, you couldn't desire it unless there was already a version of you living it, right? So it's a, it's a, that is the evidence. Your desire is not evidence that you don't have something or that you're without something. Your, your desire is not evidence of, that you have to try to believe it. Your evi that desire is faith itself. It is the evidence of your wish already fulfilled or you wouldn't be able to desire it or even think of it, right? Therefore, to think from it, as Neville Goddard talks about in his teachings, right? To think from it is to know it. Expect the physical expression or manifestation in the 3D world, right? We, what happens is we have a desire and we think of it. We never move to the understanding, the knowing, to think from it, to know that it's already ours. It's already, that's what the desire means. Right? We feel this immediate separation when actually it means you're actually one with it. That there's a version of you living that life. It's to know experientially what is already known by the limitless multidimensional you who's already living that life. Hear that. That's what desire is. It's to know experientially what you are, what's already known by the, higher, that, by the limitless multidimensional you the true you, the real you. That's why in the Gospel of Thomas, Jesus says, when you know yourselves, then you'll be known. In other words, when you know yourself as that limitless source, you'll be known. You'll know that that desire means it's fulfilled. That desire means you're already that reality. It's the realization that you are source, that you are God, that you are all that is. Very powerful today. <clears throat> That's the power in affirmations. They return you to the truth in knowing over and over again. They point back to that truth. That's what affirmations do. That's the power of them. That's what it means to persist, to persist in the truth in knowing that you are already that which you desire to be. That's the whole point there. It's not that you do them in vain. You do them from the idea that if you desire it, you are it. There's a you already living it. And that affirm the affirmations put you back to that awareness, back to that truth. That's why Neville Goddard says your refusal to believe it is the only reason you do not see it. Do you see it? In other words, your refusal to think from it versus think of it and accept it as a truth and reality within is the only reason you don't see it. Wow, that's powerful. Right? Because that's what you're, you're thinking. You're refusing to, be, to think from it, to be it, to accept that truth as a truth of reality with is the only reason why you don't see it as a physical experience in 3D reality. That's powerful today. That's what faith is, right? When we talk about faith, this whole question came up what's the difference? What is faith? Faith is a deep inner knowing, a deep conviction that what you want and desire although it's unseen, is already yours. 
That's what faith means. It's not trying to believe it, right? It, it, that creates and leaves room for doubt. Beliefs can be shaken. Beliefs can change. So it's not trying to believe it. It goes beyond belief, right? That, remember, affirmations. When, remember the Muhammad Ali quote, right? The belief turns into a deep conviction. In fact, that, it turns to that faith already, that faith in that reality that's already within you. Faith and conviction doesn't doubt, doesn't question, doesn't try, doesn't struggle, doesn't hesitate, doesn't waver, doesn't wobble. Right? Belief, you can wobble. Belief, you can hesitate. Belief, you can waver. Right? You can doubt. You can question it. Really, remember, the whole idea of trying to believe it creates the opposite of doubt. Faith is beyond opposites. Faith is a knowing. It's a conviction. It's the truth of being. That's why when, when in the scripture, when the disciples cried to Jesus, increase our faith, well, Jesus doesn't directly answer them, right? Because faith is absolute. Jesus talks about the faith of a mustard seed. That's how he answers them. If you had the faith of a mustard seed, you could uproot a mulberry tree, you could move a mountain. In other words, that absolute faith that's already within you, it's nothing that can be increased or decreased or added to or taken away from. It's your truth of being. It's who you are, right? Wow, that's powerful. So the repetition of affirmations, as we talked about yesterday and a client had a question on in our session yesterday, is, or, or in other words, the repetition of affirmations as you are thinking from it, reveals the truth in knowing already there. Affirmations are powerful as you're thinking from that reality. It reveals the truth in knowing that's already there. The repetitions are only in vain when you're thinking of it. When you're thinking of that, thinking of it like I'm thinking of it, but I don't have it. I'm thinking of it, but I'm not it. But thinking from it and affirming it as a reality already existing within you, that you're already there. That moves you, that reveals the truth in knowing that's already there. What was mere belief now becomes a deep conviction. And in other words, in, oh, and in other words, in the words of Ali, things begin to happen. Remember Ali said that the belief becomes a deep conviction when you affirm, repetition of affirm. He talks about the idea of repetition of affirmations, which I talked about in yesterday's video. That deep conviction, it now becomes a deep conviction, or in other words, in the words of our Lee, things begin to happen. It's not vain repetitions of thinking of it or trying to believe it. That's what Jesus meant by vain repetitions. You're trying to believe what's already real. You're thinking of it and not thinking from it. When Neville Goddard says, feeling is the secret, He's not talking about feeling good or positive emotion or feeling good or feeling positive emotion all the time. He's talking about feeling it real or as the truth of your inner reality. It's a knowing. I am that I am. That's what Neville's talking about. That's powerful. I pointed to that quote when he says it's not about emotion. It's about the acceptance that, that that reality is already real, that you're already that person you desire to be, right? That's feeling it real, the, the truth of that inner reality. So when he says, Neville Goddard says, faith is feeling, he says, or living in the consciousness of being the thing desired. There it is, living in the end, thinking from the end, living from that state of consciousness of already being the thing. That's what he said meant, that's the feeling. Right? It's a state of being. It's not an emotion. It's not a temporary 3D emotion or a temporary feeling of feeling good. That's thinking from and living in the end. So increase our faith. Your faith is absolute. It's the knowing. It's the awareness. It's the consciousness of already being that which you desire to be. So you don't increase your faith. It's absolute. Right? That's the faith of a mustard seed. That's why Jesus answered by, by talking about a mustard seed. A mustard seed. It's not a small amount of faith, but it's absolute faith. It's complete faith. It's whole faith. 
sealed in the conviction that it's a mustard seed and will grow and unfold into a mustard tree or a mustard plant. That's the faith of a mustard seed. Not a small amount of faith, but the faith that it's sealed in that conviction of being already that which it desires to be. And that it will manifest or unfold or grow into a mustard tree or mustard plant. That's powerful. Let's continue this. When we say faith is more than mere belief, as I've said before, we're not referring to the degree or the amount of faith. <clears throat> Rather, faith is, hear this, the very substance, the awareness, the knowing of that which is believed. It's what's believed in. It's the substance itself. Do you see it? <clears throat> belief requires you to believe in something. Right? Belief requires you to believe in something. Faith is that thing. Or in other words, it's all things or all that is. That's why the ancients said, now faith is the substance of things hoped for and the evidence of things not seen. So it's not about to try to believe in something. right? It's, it's, the, it's the substance itself, the substance of those things you're trying to believe in. That's faith. It's the very substance itself. Now, faith is the substance of things hoped for. In other words, things, trying, things that you're trying to believe in. Faith is the very substance or essence, so you don't have to believe it. It's the evidence of the things not seen. It's the evidence of the unseen reality. Remember what Neville says, faith doesn't give reality to the unseen. It's loyalty, loyalty to it. That reality exists. Right? You feel that evidence through your desire. That's how you feel it. That's what desire is. Faith is feeling, meaning it's that desire. And that desire means it's real because you feel it and you know it. You feel that evidence, right? That evidence, that substance of things not seen. You feel it through your desire. Wow. <laughs> this is powerful today. So, so, so knowing... So knowing that you desire it, go to the end, think and live from that end. Your desire is the evidence or the faith or the feeling of the unseen reality or the substance. That's what they meant. Feeling is the secret. It's the evidence. That's why it's the secret. It's the evidence that there is another version of you. Hear this. Another version of your identity already living your desired reality. That's why it's the secret. Yourself. That's the evidence that there's already another version of your identity already living your desired reality. 3D reality, remember, is not source or substance of anything. You are. In other words, your faith. In other words, your awareness and knowing is the only substance or source of reality. That's why the ancients said, by faith we understand that the worlds were framed by the word of God. I am, your awareness, your knowing, that evidence. So that things which are seen were not made of things which were, are visible. <laughs> In other words, or things which are not seen, right? Or things which are seen, yeah, were not made of things which are visible. The things which are seen were made of that unseen substance, that faith, that knowing, that awareness. By faith, we understand that the worlds were framed by the word of God. I am your awareness. So that things which are seen were not made of things which are visible. It's get That 3D reality is not source of substance of anything. You are. And that substance is your faith. And that feeling is your desire. Faith is feeling. That's the desire. That desire can only be there if you're already living that reality, if you're already that, who you, that which you desire to be. Right? That's powerful today. So this is what the entire teachings of Neville Goddard and the other spiritual greats right, are all, is all about. When Neville says you were in Barbados, that lesson, Right? Where Abdullah, his, his, his teacher, his mentor, Abdullah says, you are in Barbados. And you went first class. In other words, you are in that reality. You are that person you want to be. In the moment now that you desire or want something, assume you already are it and have it. That's the law of assumption. Or in the very moment that you desire to be something, 
You couldn't desire it. You couldn't want it. You couldn't have that feeling, that inner feeling of desire or wanting unless you were already it, unless there was a version of you living it. That's the substance. That's the faith. That's the reality of it. That's the law of assumption. That feeling of desire is the faith and evidence that it's done, that it's yours, and you're already that person you desire to be no matter what. How you're desiring and wanting means it's already yours. I am your host, Tom Karen, and this is the Be Something Wonderful studio of higher consciousness where we help you level up and become the best version of yourself. Creators, thank you. Thank you for being with, the, with me. Thank you for liking and sharing and commenting on the videos. Thank you for being part of our Facebook group, The Ambassadors, at facebook.com slash groups slash Be Something Wonderful, for joining us on Instagram and Twitter at Tom Karen for joining our TikTok at Be Something Wonderful. You can find us anywhere at either Tom Karen or at Be Something Wonderful. And we even have an organization page on Facebook at Be Something Wonderful. So join us there. And also we have a membership channel that has exclusive content and live streams that, are, that generally we, we try to do every month. <laughs> Not dry, we do it. We do it every month. And we have one this month. Next week, and, and this is going to be on Saturday, February 25th, 2024 at 9 a.m. in the morning, Pacific Coast Standard Time. We're going to come to you live. I'm going to come to you live from the studios here and be something wonderful. I'm going to be answering your questions and talking about topics that you're sending to us at info at be something wonderful.com. So keep sending your questions and your topics at info at be something wonderful.com. And we have new content coming on the membership channel. If you're a member, thank you for being a member and joining. If you're not, check it out. There's a link below. With great light, with great gratitude and infinite gratitude and love. Until next time, this is Tom in the studios here of Be Something Wonderful in Las Vegas. We'll see you soon.